Ready to start? Good evening and welcome. Um, I'm Council Member Chris Ray, and I'm going to call to order the April 10th, 2024 City Council Mobility and Infrastructure Committee. Uh, with me this evening is Deputy Council President Barbara D. Michelle and Council Member Zach Hall. Um, there are uh, multiple public comment opportunities at tonight's meeting. There is a general public comment opportunity at the beginning of the meeting, or you can make comment after the presentation and council question and answer period. Uh, members of the public may address the council at this time, either in person or virtually. Those who have signed up in advance uh, to make comments will be called on first. Uh, before I spend more time, is there anybody online? Uh, Sim clerk. There's nobody online, Chair Ray. All right, and I'm going to skip over that, and we will come back to this um, when we get through our one agenda item today. So uh, we do have uh, two items on the agenda. One is the approval of the minutes, and then we have uh, uh, COM0009 Squawk Mountain Non-Motorized Improvement Project Landscape Standards that John Larson Friend is going to be presenting tonight. So um, let's talk about the minutes. Um, any objections to approving the minutes from our March 12th meeting? Without objections, the minutes are approved. So uh, let us move into our first agenda item this evening, which is COM0009, Squawk Mountain on Motorized Improvements. John, take it away. Working. Uh, good evening, council members. Uh, I'm John Larson Friend, uh, Transportation Program Coordinator here at the city, uh, and I'm here to talk to you tonight about the Squawk Mountain Non Motorized Improvement Project and landscape. So, our purpose tonight is we are seeking direction on uh, whether to modify street standards to provide more protection for trees in critical areas and proceed with public involvement on the Squawk Mountain non-motorized project ahead of changes to the, to the street, street standard. Uh, the direction needed this evening is whether the administration should uh, propose a change to the landscaping standards in the street standards to provide more protection for trees in critical areas, uh, and also to proceed with public engagement with the Squawk Mountain neighborhood using street designs that would require a revision to the landscaping standards in the street standards. So a little bit about the project and how it's going. So this is project TR-068, Squawk Mountain Non-Motorized Improvement Project. The objective of this project is to determine a preferred plan of roadway improvements to the non-motorized facilities along 12th Avenue Northwest and Mount Olympus Drive Northwest. Uh, to the left there is a map. It shows the extent of the project. Uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really fun project, really providing those non-motorized facilities to for residents to get down to Tibbetts Park and Park and Ride and other connective uh, as well. Project overview, uh, we've been working with a consultant. We have broken it down into kind of five steps here. Uh, first, there's a, there was a listen and learn uh, opportunity. Uh, step two, uh, we developed alternatives. I'll talk about those two in a second. And then uh, into the future will be step three, presenting these alternatives to the community. Step four, project summary report by the consultant. And then step five will be achieving approval, hopefully by council. And to give you an idea of where we're at, that's where we're at. So we're kind of right in the middle of uh, step two and three, and that's why we are here. Yes, animation. <laughs> so going back to step one, uh, the listen and learn phase. So we went out to the Squawk Mountain neighborhood, conducted a survey, which went ex extremely well, in my opinion. Um, we had uh, overwhelming support for sidewalks, which is to be expected, I think. Uh, and then sort of general support for bicycle facilities. It wasn't overwhelming like the sidewalks, but it was there. Um, and then there were also concerns about safety and speeding that popped up. Step two, uh, so during the development of these alternatives, 
uh, we developed four street, streetscape designs uh, directly uh, drawing from the survey results. Uh, we conducted an internal workshop uh, of stakeholders within the city, different departments. We all kind of came together during a two-hour window and narrowed those four designs down to two. Uh, the designs ended up focusing on tree preservation and pedestrian connections. Uh, neither adhere to Issaquah street standards. That's why we're here tonight. So let's talk about the rules. Uh, so this is, a, I felt like, a really good example of those landscaping standards and what it kind of looks like practically within the community. So uh, Issaquah Street Standards Design Section F uh, states, and I'll just go ahead and state it all, uh, landscaping in the form of planting strips with street trees shall be required consistent with IMC 18606170 landscape requirements on public properties and rights of way. This typically includes a, a minimum five foot wide planting strip with street trees between the curb and sidewalk for landscaping and appurtenances. Oh, I practice this so many times. <laughs> appurtenances. The city engineer and community planning and development director may approve the de a deviation to res reduce the landscape strip requirements. So moving over to ISCA Municipal Code. Uh, 1860 says, among many other things, uh, you'll notice the letters are very high <laughs> at this point, um, all pedestrian facilities must be buffered with trees and shrubs appropriate in size, scale, planter type, and character to the type of facility or sub-area. Uh, street trees must be planted in a planting strip with a minimum between the sidewalk and back of curb. Street trees are required for all project applications re required to provide frontage improvements in the rights of way unless the director approves a deviation in accordance with IMC 18606190. And 18606190 states that an applicant may request a deviation from street tree requirements in IMC 18606170 if all the criteria under 18202080 and the following criteria on is met and there is just one. The applicant demonstrates that the deviation addresses a public safety risk. What does that all mean? Um, this is a, a, a Google Street View shot of the Mount Olympus Drive, so keep this in mind, it'll come back in a second. So our analysis has shown that, and working with CPD, we've determined that only a safety issue could warrant a deviation away from the planter strip rule. Uh, the recommended designs from the workshop for the Squawk Mountain project do not include a planter strip due to the impacts on up to 179 trees uh, and 231 estimated root impacts. Having a safety-only deviation for planter strips increases impacts to the environment and neighbors' driveways and yards. So we wanted to provide kind of a, a visual aid for you uh, this evening. This is a this is what a full build out adherent to the code and street standards would look like. Um, this is that area that I showed a picture of before. Um, this is, and if you'll look in that on that map in the lower left-hand corner, this is just that little white strip that I've highlighted. Um, this is between Mount Pilchuck and Aries Drive, I think it's pronounced. Um, so the, the way to read this is uh, you have your center line and then you have your uh, right-of-way and then uh, beyond the orange line is that bike lane, and then you have your planter strip, five feet, and then you have your uh, sidewalk, which is also five feet. The red polygons are impacts to driveways, and then uh, I think more relevantly and more importantly, I should say, uh, are the trees. So we have our GIS uh, street cover layer here, which is the green, and then I added some orange splotches for trees that will probably most definitely be affected by the project if, uh, if we were to do a full build out. Um, I did it, I eyeballed it, I'd used Google, Google Street View. Um, and to be honest, I think I was a little generous. I think even these dots would probably be even closer in, but, uh, but they're highlighted nonetheless. We also wanna mention that uh, a street standards update would also concern impacts to critical areas uh, including geologically haz hazardous areas, wetlands, fish and wildlife habitat conservation areas, and streams. These aren't specifically relevant to this project, but they would will come up in the, the 
conversation we'll have about the street standards. So we can, we'll, we'll bring information about that uh, when we come back, if we come back. I don't think it's a secret. Uh, I think it's well known that our city policies and goals uh, truly support, well, retention of healthy trees. Uh, for example, here, the uh, ICAP, uh, ISQA Climate Action Plan, prioritizes retention of healthy trees. Uh, and the comp plan, among many others, you'll find the whole list that I gave you in the memo uh, in the comprehensive plan, protect natural environment from negative impact of human activities, maintain forested character of older neighborhoods, including SWAC, uh, conserve and protect environmentally critical areas. So this evening, we are bringing you two options. Uh, the first one is do not support the adjustments to street standards. Provide community members feedback opportunities only on designs that meet code. Or two, do support the adjustment to street standards. Uh, we'll, we would go ahead and share the design alternatives with the community with the assumption that council will adopt an amendment to the street standards that will provide more flexibility to protect existing trees and critical areas. Our recommendation this evening is that we would proceed with engagement using the non-code compliant designs and begin the process to amend the street standards to allow for more protection of existing trees in critical areas. And just really quickly, timing and next steps uh, kind of comes in two parts. The, the project itself, uh, we would re-engage with, uh, with our consultant. We've put them on hold for the last few months. Uh, and we would go ahead and proceed with public engagement, whatever that looks like, after tonight uh, into the summer. And then uh, whatever preferred alternative comes out of that process, we would go to TAB in the fall, we would come back to you uh, in late 2024, and then late 2024, early 2025, go to council for adoption. And then as far as street standards go, uh, any changes to that, we would bring forward uh, to TAB in the fall, similar schedule. Uh, late 2024, bring it back here to MNI, and then early 2025 to Council. And then if there are any Title 18 changes, and that's an, that's an if at this point, uh, that would happen in 2025. So just to reiterate, uh, tonight we're asking for you to provide direction on whether the administration should propose a change to the street standards to provide more protection for trees in critical areas, and whether to proceed with public engagement with the Squawk Mountain neighborhood using street designs that would require street standards. I can take uh, any questions at this point. All right. Questions? Um, Deputy President. Um, so, John, uh, if we, uh, I, and I think you've made a really good case about going forward, but if we do this deviation, is this a one time thing or does it go into the Title 18? Uh, code as well as uh, this is a, you know what I'm saying, is it a, a permanent deviation or is it just for this project? Yeah, so this is meant to be uh, an ongoing, so the first thing that we would go into is the street standards. That's what we really want to focus on. Um, we would, we would uh, go in and make the change uh, for a deviation on an ongoing basis in the street standards instead of just going in for this one time. Um, there are other situations that we believe will be coming up as we install more sidewalks and hopefully create more connectivity across the community um, that would warrant at least having a little bit of flexibility. Councilmember Hall. Um, okay, so I guess maybe that confused me a little. So it, would the change be that Council would adopt a new policy to allow for flexibility or to allow for this? This would be a change that would allow for greater flexibility holistically. Yeah. For um, requests for deviation. For requests for deviation. Okay. Yeah. Understood. Because okay. at this point it's only it's only safety and there's there's no other wiggle room that we could we could find. Um could you also speak to, you spoke to a little a little bit about this in an email response, I appreciate that, but could you speak more to kind of bicycle facilities and how we're thinking about that, both from community desire on Squawk, but also to 
Reasonability, <laughs> there's a word. <laughs> yeah, we, um, we've been working with uh, the consultant with, on this, and they, they've, been, they've ta basically taken a holistic approach. Um, they, they, we asked the community about, community about bicycle facilities, uh, pedestrian facilities, um, obviously roadway facilities as well. Um, and so we are have a, a better. Emily, do you have any input? Good evening, Emily Moon, Public Works Director. I would say that the consultant has looked at all opportunities for enhanced mobility of all types on this roadway. And, and as you're hearing tonight, our biggest constraint is the existing conditions out there right now. And so we have to prioritize, we believe, um, because alternatively, if we try to fit everything in, there are repercussions of that, other things um, that we would have to trade off. So as we look at bike facilities, we're really trying to examine who are the users who would likely bike on this road that has um, a steep pitch, for example. Um, that tells us that there are probably few young children uh, that, that might be bicycling on this road, um, just as an example. So we're thinking about the users. We're thinking about how can we uh, enhance their ability to travel on this roadway, on bike. Um, and we've looked at a few design alternatives that include bicycle facilities. But again, it gets back to this question of how much can we fit and uh, what's appropriate for the, the type of bicycle user that is likely to be using this road. How can we grow that potential, but also be realistic about um, who is likely to use it? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and there's probably like some consideration too of, I imagine people aren't biking up the hill, but once you're in the neighborhoods, there's probably some biking and mobility that's taking place there. So anyways, fascinating. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that, that came up, and thank you for, for coming to my rescue there for a second. Um, uh, yeah, so what, that one, was one thing that came out of the survey. A, f a few of people, it wasn't overwhelming or anything like that, but it did come up that, oh, man, this is a steep hill. Like, I'm not going to bike on that. But at the same time, the data showed a really big uptick in people who are at least curious about riding bikes more up there, uh, if not using it on a daily or weekly basis. Yeah. I have a couple. So you talked about the impact to driveways. What is the potential impact to driveways? There are a few different impacts. Um, there's, there's, thankfully, there's only one specific driveway that would uh, get worse in pitch. Uh, everything else would either stay the same or get a little bit better. Um, but it is a consideration that we, that we want to to look at. Thankfully, it, thankfully the, the roadway is fairly flat into driveways mm -hmm. in that way, uh, but it is still an impact to the properties that are getting in and out. So is, is there, um, and the, I may be ahead of myself and you can tell me we're not there yet and that's fine, um, but is there a planned outreach to people who would be affected, so not only say the driveway changes, but also um, what's the impact on their front yard, I mean, people didn't tend to feel like the right-of-way is their, theirs, and it's, um, so when they're, when it gets sucked up, it, it has an impact, so um, have we done anything along those lines? Have we thought about it? What's, what's the thinking? The first survey that we put out was more general. Um, we got over 250 to 70 responses, which is great, especially for Squawk Mountain. Um, I believe we will be working with the consultant to to do that very much more nuanced and specific outreach to, to them. And it looks like Emily has a comment. Thank you, Chair Ray. Uh, I would just add that we have certain phases where we do uh, direct engagement with property owners. Right now we're more at that general level where we don't even have uh, preferred design alternatives narrowed down. But the Conversations that we have had with community members do describe some of the potential impacts of different design choices. And then as we get those design alternatives narrowed down, we begin having more direct conversations with individual property owners. And we do that all throughout the, the duration of the project. We do it during the design phase, we do it 
do it during the construction phase as well, because those uh, impacts are very individualized. Yeah, like I said, I, 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 I was going to be surprised if you were way ahead of this already, but I, I just wanted to make sure that we had it on the, the radar. Um, and I think you may have just answered my last question, which is, do we have any visuals on the proposed or possible street standards that we would consider? I mean, you showed us kind of the standard, but are we still kind of in the, the development phase of what those, what the possibilities are? We just looked at the current one and said, ouch, you know, this is going to be a problem. That is correct, yes. Okay. That's all I've got. Um, let me pause and see if we have anybody online who would like to make public comment at this time. You don't have one. No one there. No virtual attendees. Chair. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna move on then and uh, talk about direction. So, a couple of things that the administration has asked for is um, should the proposed changes to the streetscapes provide more protection for trees in critical areas and so we proceed with public engagement, Block Mountain neighborhood, and using the street design that would require street standard. So, do they want to go first? Councilmember Hall. Um, thank you. Thank you for being so thoughtful about this process and not just being like, well, code says to do this, so we have to do this. You've identified an opportunity to come to council, and I appreciate it. Um, I think. For me, in reviewing this material, it was really hard to come up for a reason for why not, why we wouldn't do something like this, especially because the impacts that you've identified seem like they could be significant to homeowners, but also directly in contradiction of our um, climate action plan and our comprehensive plan, our North Star's environmental stewardship. Um, and so I kind of wanted to take a step back and think about well, there's got to be a desired outcome, a specific intent for the code as it's written right now. And John had written back and said that that was comfortable pedestrian experience on the sidewalk paired with green landscaping appropriate for the streetscape. So it seems to me that allowing an adjustment to the street standards in this particular case, um, and in cases similar to that as we identify them down the road, um, the desired outcome would be the same. We would have that kind of green landscape character and a safe, comfortable walking experience. And so for me, as long as the desired outcomes or the actual outcomes are aligned, uh, I don't see a problem with moving forward with providing the adjustment to the street standards and then moving forward with public engagement. Um, first walk, um, in fact, I think they'll probably be very happy that these impacts were identified and pushed the brakes a little bit. Um, you know, I had also asked about um, whether the scope of the project included traffic calming, and it, so it sounds like that kind of thinking does feed into this project too. So I think traffic calming is something we hear from a lot of our neighborhoods that have some degree of separation from um, downtown, like the South Lake Sammamish and the Highlands and Dallas and Walk. Um, so I think that's going to be a really important thing to play into this and won't necessarily impact space on either side unless there are techniques that I'm not aware of. But um, I still feel strongly that bicycle facilities, as well as a pleasant walking, sidewalk experience, is important, though I understand. Uh, that might evolve into a way that's just not possible to attain. So maybe there are these targeted um, approaches where we have some sort of element of bicycle space in targeted areas. Because I know there's like one bend up there that's like really sharp. So as a bicycle comes along, you don't really get to see cars that are coming on. So there are probably opportunities to be targeted with extra space that could accommodate bicycles and that other kind of um, mobility options, and that those would be good questions to be specific about with the residents up there. I would, um, again, I don't have any other comments. Uh, I, I feel comfortable moving forward with the direction that you Thank you. Council Member D. Michelle. Thanks. So uh, I was really impressed by the number of people at, in this block that 
that uh, I think it was 278 was the number, if I'm thinking correctly. And uh, I thought, well, that's that's a really engaged community, but obviously this is really important to them as well. So the fact that they want sidewalks up there is uh, really a clear direction that we got from that survey. So I was really impressed with that. I sort of feel like a Supreme Court um, judge right now because you know, on one side we have our Title 18, and then over here we've got our climate action plan, and so you have to come to the Supreme Court to find out which one of those is going to guide this. So let's go with the uh, climate action plan. <laughs> So, so, uh, and I really appreciate the way you laid that, laid out the information so we could see that contrast real clearly and know uh, what uh, decision we had to make. But um, I do think that, uh, as Councilmember Hall said, that uh, Climate Action Plan is our North Star, and that is the one that uh, we worked a long time on to, uh, and we have a lot of support in the community for that. And so, um, and I don't see any downside to providing more flexibility in the Title 18 so that when we come to future projects, uh, we've got, uh, you know, we've got a, uh, yeah, let's see, how can I increase this Supreme Court analogy? We've got a, a case that uh, we could look at and use in, the fu in future decisions. So I don't see any uh, problem with providing more flexibility at that level so that we guide future uh, uh, decisions as well. So. Yes, I support uh, uh, a future change to the street standards. And yes, please proceed with uh, public engagement uh, with Squawk Mountain uh, using the street designs um, uh, that have uh, been developed so far. And I would look forward to hearing back from what the community says, because I have a feeling that uh, what we do in future uh, public engagement is going to be uh, really uh, active and, and engaged with that community. So. Good job so far. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I have a couple thoughts. And the, the first one is whenever we make a modification to standards, street standards, any standards, it's a slippery slope. And in this case, it's a steep slippery slope. <laughs> um, but seriously, um, you know, what, you know, it's like you just kind of, you need to put some guardrails on that. Um, so we need to understand what precedent we're setting here um, because. We don't want to get into a thing where, well, you know, I don't like it, and so I'm going to do this. And it's like, well, no, there's got to be some really firm criteria that, that we can apply in a thoughtful manner. So I think one of the problems is is the current um, criteria for a deviation or a, um, a deviation, okay, um, is uh, probably too narrow. So so I think that there's some things we need to look at there. Um, I am struck with the health and safety of the trees or environment is a very interesting thing to to talk about being as in, you know the ICAP for uh, uh, the deputy council president and uh, Tree City US or you know, Tree City Issaquah. So I think that you know we've got a a balance between um, kind of having standards, um, conforming to those standards, um, having the same experience in the city where you wherever you go is I think really important to me. Um, but at the same time, how do we uh, have the flexibility to do the right thing without um, having to tie ourselves into knots? So, um, so I, I, I suggest that we, we move forward with this, but that we do it also in a thoughtful way that has some very well-defined criteria about these are things that you need to consider. So broaden that. And then, as my colleagues said, I'm really interested in the input from uh, the people on Squawk Mountain to see what they want to do because. This is a really erratic, I mean, it's the right, it feels right to me, but I don't live there, but it's a real radical um, change for up, uh, up on the mountain. And so I'm really interested to see how people respond to it and um, the designs that they like. And then how do we put those designs in such a way to balance uh, Supreme Court, um, the needs of the environment with the, um, the kind of desire to provide these additional capabilities and amenities. So, um, so I say, uh, yeah, let's, let's look at it. Let's be thoughtful. And then definitely proceed with public engagement and see where we go from there. All right. Do you have what you need, sir? Yes, I do. All yeah. right. Thank you so much. I appreciate right. your time. Uh, wow. I think uh, we are getting close to the end of this agenda. Um, and we do have a announcement section. Any, any announcements? Go to the order-ish? Nope. All right. 
Um, in that case, it's seven o'clock and we're adjourned.